Well, hello and welcome back to The Daily Brew. Great to have you here with me, The Devotional, where every day we drink a new brew of coffee and we see what God is brewing for us in the Bible. Yes, it's cheesy, but it's true. Good news, I found my Bible. I'd lost it, uh, but, well, I'd actually just cleaned up the house and I'd put it somewhere, forgot where I put it, so I found it. I'm happy about that. Uh, I've got that, the Bible locked in, uh, and I'm excited today. You're joining me in Auckland. And uh, I'm excited to have you with me on every podcasting platform. Hello, and on YouTube as well. Nice to see you. Hey, uh, we're going to have a look at our scriptures for today. They're in the descriptions uh, on every platform. So let's have a look at those. Proverbs 3, 1 to 10. Matthew 16, 21 to 17, 13. And Genesis 47, 13 to 48, 22. So that is the scripture that we're reading on day 24. If you are joining us for the first time, uh, feel free to head back to day one. It's a Bible in the Year plan. Uh, you don't want to miss a day, otherwise you haven't read the whole Bible in a year. So what would be the point of that? Uh, before we go into the Bible anymore, though, let's talk brews. And today we are back with Mount Atkinson Coffee. We are doing the Hui, uh, the not Hui, uh, the Mur- Murawai, Murawai Blend again. Now, I did like this in an espresso, but I wanted to try it in filter. Uh, and a sneaky little secret, I've been using a lot of the Chemex, more than I have the uh, coffee machine over the last few days and I do like the Chemex, 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 not Chemex, not Chemex, Chemex, I do like it. Um, So we've got this uh, here, I've done a, what have I done? I've done 20 grams of coffee, 300 grams of water, so that's 300 grams in there, that's uh, the brew uh, time. So let's let's give this a go, let's put this in uh, to the cup and uh, pour that out there. Pour it out, let you never know. We've been singing a lot on the podcast today. Maybe maybe we've been singing too much. I don't know. Let me know how you feel about the singing on the podcast. Um, we are looking for the flavor profile, tasting notes of toffee, brioche. Toffee, brioche. There's no comma in there. That's one thing we're looking for. Ah, one thing we're looking for. Toffee, brioche, passion fruit, and milk chocolate. So there you go. That's what we're looking for. Let's see if I can taste this in the filter. Do it a wee sniff. Uh, and let's give it a taste now. Let's see what it tastes like as a filter. Yeah, as a filter, you get full passion fruit. Like no toffee, not really any toffee, not really any chocolate, the overwhelming taste. It's so much lighter in your mouth. It feels a lot lighter. It was really smooth. I remember being very smooth in the espresso, but as a filter, man, you get that passion fruit punch, which I enjoy. I do like passion fruit as a flavor. So that's really lovely. If you want to give that a try as a filter, Uh, You will thoroughly enjoy that. There you go. Not sponsored. Mount Atkinson Coffee. Not sponsored. Not yet, though. Not yet. Could be, though, if you want to. Uh, Let me know. Uh, But that is it as a filter. Enough of the brew. Let's get into the Bible today uh, and get into our devotional for today. How do you talk with God? The fact that as Christians, we can have conversation with the creator of the heavens and the earth is pretty special. And it's an amazing reality that we get as Christians. Talking with him is the easy part. We bring our praise, our adoration, our thankfulness, and our requests before him. We tell him our needs, we express our gratitude, and we marvel in his wonder. But for for most of us, that's where it stops. We're good at doing the talking, but we're not as good at doing the listening. It would be like if we brought a plumber into our house to fix something. We explain everything that's wrong with the piping, right? We explain that the pipe rattles and that the water's always cold and the toilet only flushes on a Tuesday and then on a Wednesday afternoon, you know. But other than that, I'm not getting any flushing. And then saying, hey, well, thanks for listening to all my stuff. Uh, we'll see you next time. How much do I owe you? Like, th- there's, there's no point in that. There's no point in just talking. There's no point. That's not conversation. That's just like chewing someone's ear off. It doesn't make sense that that's how we talk with God. But yet for so many Christians, that's our expression of communication. Conversation and then conversion is both ways, right? Conversation is both talking and listening. And then converting that conversation into action is listening and permissing and agreeing. It's no surprise, to be honest, that as humans, we're like this. In our Western society now, we have so many voices pumped into our lives 24-7 with TV, with social media, with the internet, with everything pumping into our homes. We're so good at, 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 at having one-way dialogue. But if we're not listening and agreeing with God, what kind of miraculous things are we missing out on that God has to say and wants to do in our lives? One of the easiest and most accessible ways we can listen to the voice of God is through Scripture. 
God's word, not just because it's written down words, but because it's his voice, his word, empowered by the Holy Spirit and inspired through the pages of this book. Proverbs today gives us a very clear instruction to not forget his teaching and to keep his commands. We find what God thinks and sounds like through the pages of scripture. The Bible is not a collection of short stories, nice thoughts, historical wisdom, and poems. It's God's word written for us. We need to get good at writing this scripture on the tablet of our heart. So how do we do that? We need to memorize scripture. We need to read the word daily, and we need to study the Bible. It's as we do this that we begin to lean not on our own understanding, but trust in the Lord and find favor in him every day. In Matthew, we see the importance of having the right voices with the right spirit speaking into our lives. Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, confronts Jesus about the prediction of going to the cross. Jesus has just announced to his disciples the purpose of his life here on earth. It's a bold and raw moment that we're reading about in scripture with his disciples as they believed that he had come to overthrow the rulers of Jerusalem and not just die on a cross. And then what happens is Jesus, he tells them, and Peter then he confronts Jesus and rebukes Jesus. Wild. Have you thought about that? That he actually rebukes Jesus. Now look at how this manipulation comes into play, right? Jesus has expressed his intent, his purpose, and now the person closest to him has come to him and tried to confront and rebuke him for what God has put him here to do on earth. Watch how this happens, right? Number one, Peter takes him aside. Jesus is addressing his disciples in a group setting, but Peter, he isolates Jesus. Then number two, he rebukes him. He challenges the vision and mission of Jesus. Number three, he offers a steep counter to what Jesus says using emotive language. Listen to the language Peter uses. He says, never, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Now, bear in mind, this is the same guy who declares in faith that Jesus is Lord. Now, using emotive language to try and rebuke Jesus. And Jesus' response, it's harsh and it's strong. It's get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely the concerns of human or or merely human concerns. See, one of the ways God speaks to us is through wise counsel. Jesus, he discerns the voice of the enemy through Peter's counsel. Through Peter's emotion, he allowed the enemy to speak through him. Jesus wasn't rebuking Peter. He was rebuking the spirit that had entered Peter, that Peter had allowed through emotion. Jesus used discernment to pick out the enemy's voice and rebuke the rebuke. We need to make sure that we have the right voices speaking into our lives with the right spirit behind them. As a side note, Peter, a disciple of Jesus, a man of faith, he goes on to do some pretty great things. He allowed in this moment his human concerns to overrule the concerns of God. And this is what uh, made me quite alert. Um, It alerted me as I read this, that as a leader and as a preacher, as a husband, I need to make sure that I don't allow my human concerns to trump the concerns of God in my counsel that I give to others. If you're a leader, pastor, preacher, husband, wife, mother, father, or good friend who people trust, you need to make sure that you're open to the leading of the Holy Spirit and not the spirit of the enemy. You know, I once asked a mentor to speak into a big situation, a big decision I had to make. uh, And when I asked them for their advice, they stopped and they said to me, hey, can, can I go away and pray about that and get back to you? I have so much respect for that mentor because what they did was they made sure it wasn't their own advice, swayed by human intention. But it was the advice that they believed that God had spoken to them about. I ended up following it and stepped into some great things. And I love it when mentors, and I want to be this mentor for others, but I love it when mentors take the time to stop and make sure that God is the one speaking through them so that they give good advice. In our Old Testament scripture, we see Joseph now outworking the dream that he had had as a young boy. There's a huge famine in Egypt, but through wisdom and great leadership, Joseph navigated his way through and brought great prosperity to Egypt. God had spoken to him in that dream. We read about it and we talked about it the other day, but I wanted to come back to dreams as a key way that God can speak to us and we can hear his voice. Joseph was good at interpreting them because God had given him favor to do so. I want to encourage you to ask God to start to reveal what your dreams mean and start writing them down. You never know what you might stumble across. Maybe something divine in your dreams. Verse of the day. Yes, Matthew 17, 3 is a super sneaky extra bonus verse that we're going to have a look at today. Have a look at this. Just then, there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Have you ever read that and gone... Why Moses and Elijah? Like, 
Jesus, he goes up the mountain with Peter, James, and John, and he has, in, has a radical encounter with the presence of God. It's, it's the Mount of Transfiguration. But the Bible says that he's joined by Moses and Elijah, and he starts to spin yarns with them. But why not Esther and Noah? Why not Ruth and Job? The reason why it was Elijah and Moses was that it was a statement. Jesus is both the fulfillment of the law, represented by Moses, and the fulfillment of the prophets, represented by Elijah. Who knows what they talked about? I have no idea. But what we do know is that they came down the mountain and Jesus would then go to the cross and bring fulfillment to the law and the things prophesied about him. Maybe that moment on the mountain was just about an encouragement from the two who carried it first. Jesus being the fulfillment of the law and prophets, not the fulfillment of beauty contests and boat building. Well, that is it for the Daily Brew today. Day number 24, done and dusted. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I'm praying that God is speaking to you through these scriptures and revealing something new to you every single day. We've almost completed our first full month. Thank you so much for coming with me on the journey. I pray that God is blessing you. Hey, I want to encourage you, if you haven't done so already, to take a moment and follow this podcast and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It'll help bump this to the top every single day so that you never miss a devotion. Also, if you've got any thoughts on any great brews I should try, any coffee roasts, uh, or how I could make coffee better, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Feel free to hit me up in the DMs on my social media as well. I'd love to hear from you, some testimonies and some things God is doing. I'm so encouraged by hearing from you uh, about what God is doing in your life. Hey, well, that is it for today. Come back tomorrow for another day on The Daily Brew. Day 25, tomorrow, a new brew and some more Bible. If this is the start of your day, have a great rest of your day. And if it's the end of the day, good night, sleep tight, and we'll see you tomorrow for another day. Bye.